Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on trends along period three. In the previous tutorial, we learned about classifying elements based on S, P and D block, and also F block as well, and their proton number. This time we are having a look at the atomic radius trends. We're looking at the melting point trends and the first ionization energy trends as well as we move across period three. Let's have a quick recap. We're going to talk about melting point, atomic radius and ionization energies and proton number as well. So just to remind yourselves, the atomic radius of an element decreases as you move across the period. Of course, as we move across the period, the proton number is increasing. So the positive charge in the dense center of that atom is going to be increasing and the shielding is not going to change because we're in the same period as we said in the previous tutorial we have no increase or decrease in shielding we're going to be putting our electrons into the same shell so we're going to get a stronger positive charge no increase in shielding so therefore the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electrons is going to increase and the electrons are going to be pulled inwards towards that increasing positive charge so we're going to get that radius reducing and contracting as we move across period three for example, I've got period four here. So we're looking at group one potassium and group two calcium. You can see that potassium has got one electron in its outermost shell. Calcium's got two, but they're in the same orbital. We don't have any increase in shielding. They've both got one, two, three, one, two, three shells below them. But calcium is going to have a greater proton charge in the centre. It's going to be a two plus. Um, it's going to have two protons in the centre, whereas Potassium will only have one. So calcium is going to exert a stronger force on the outermost electrons, contracting that radius in a little bit in comparison, a little bit more in comparison to that potassium atom. So we can look at that in period three as well. And we can actually look at that on a graph. So we can see the trend of the atomic radii across period three. It is decreasing as we move along. So as the atomic number, the positive charge of the nucleus increases, the radius decreases as the result of the nucleus becoming more and more positively charged and therefore the attraction between the outermost electrons and the centre increasing because there's no shielding effect. So we can also think about the melting point as we move across period three. So as we move across the period, it changes according to the structure. That's really important. We've got different types of structure and intermolecular forces as we move across period three. So both structure and bonding is going to have an effect on melting point. And we learned earlier in the book about intermolecular forces. As soon as you hear melting a boiling point, alarm bells should be ringing. You should be thinking about things like van der Waals, um, giant covalent structures, potentially covalent bonding, inter and intramolecular bonding. This can be notoriously quite challenging for students when we're comparing the melting points across the period because there's lots of different types of bonding and structures within period three. So we're going to separate them out. We're going to compare the metals, so sodium to aluminium. Then we're going to look at silicon. Then we're going to look at the simple molecular structures. And then we're going to look at the noble gas. So let's separate them out. So we're looking at the metals here, group one, two and three, sodium, magnesium and aluminium. So what do you think is going to happen in terms of their melting point as we move along? So as we move from sodium, magnesium to aluminium, we're going to get to increase in the melting point. OK, because we've got metallic bonding here. So metallic bonding and we've looked at this in another topic. So if you want a reminder, jump back. Metallic bonding, we've got a larger charge on the aluminium. We've got a three plus charge of each of the positive ions in the center, and it's going to drop off three electrons for every one of those atoms, whereas sodium is only going to drop one electron off because it becomes a one plus ion. So there's three electrons being dropped off by the aluminium. It's got a greater charge density, and we're going to have a greater and stronger metallic bonding between and the electrostatic force of attraction between the three electrons and each aluminium uh, three plus ion is going to be much stronger. So we're going to have the strongest metallic bonding in aluminium and the weakest in sodium. And of course, the stronger the bonding is, the more energy it requires to overcome that bonding. So the higher the melting point. Another an example of what's going on here. So if we're comparing sodium and calcium, sodium is in group one, so it's just going to drop one electron off for each uh, cation. Whereas with calcium, we're going to be dropping two electrons off, and that's going to increase that electrostatic force of attraction, therefore require more energy to break. Let's move on to silicon. Now, silicon. Do you think it's got a high or a low melting point? 
it's got a very high melting point because it is a giant covalent structure or a macromolecular structure. So we're going to have silicon bonded with another silicon to another silicon to another silicon going on and on and on into the distance. OK, so we've got a lot going on here and it's going to make this giant structure that just goes uh, that requires a lot of energy to overcome because these are covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are comparatively the strongest type of bond. So they require an awful lot of energy to break. So, yeah, we've got covalent bonding. And so we've got a large amount of energy to break those. So a high melting point. Then we're going to compare our simple molecular structures. So phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine. Now, these are going to exist as P4, S8, almost drew an 8 first off there, and Cl2. That is how they move around in their molecular structure. OK, so with our with all of them, because P4 is just a, a four phosphorus atoms bonded together, that it's not going to be electronegative, it's not going to be polar, we're just going to have simple London forces, or remember they used to be called Van der Waals forces, so induced dipole-dipole interactions. These are weak intermolecular forces. So overall, compared to the metallic bonding and the giant covalent we've been looking at, these three are going to have, on average, a lower melting and boiling point, because we're just going to have weak London forces, intermolecular forces holding them together. Now let's compare within these. So how does P4 compare to S8 and compare to C2, Cl2? Remember that when we're talking about London forces, the larger the amount of electrons, the more electrons we have, the stronger the London forces, the more energy required to overcome. So here I'm just going to look, what's the largest molecule? S8. So S8 is a much larger molecule. It's going to have the greatest amount of electrons. Greatest electron number, so that is going to have the strongest London forces. Strongest London forces, which means the highest melting point. And that's going to be followed, of course, by P4 and then Cl. So in terms of if we had a graph, we would have P4 up for S8 and then down for Cl2. Finally, we're on to our noble gas are argon. So do we think argon's going to have a higher or lower melting point? It's going to have a really, a very low melting point. That is because it's just an atom by itself. So it is going to show London forces or induced dipole-dipole forces or van der Waals forces um, uh, because the electrons are going to be moving around the cloud at any particular time. But those are weak intermolecular forces. It's very small. It's just one atom. So there's not many electrons. So it's not going to require much energy to break those intermolecular forces. So we've got ARs near each other. There's going to be a few intermolecular forces going on, but it's really not going to require much energy to break those. And so it's going to melt very easily. Let's think about ionization energies then. So do you think they're going to increase or decrease as we move across period three? Ionization energy is going to increase as we move across period three. So remember, we're talking about first ionization energies, not successive. So it increases as you move across the period. The number of protons is, of course, increasing. Therefore, the attraction between the positive nucleus and the negative electrons is going to increase. That's what makes the radius decrease as well. So more energy is going to be required to overcome that force and remove that outermost electron. So that's going to create or cause the first ionization energy to increase as you move across period three.